Hi, I'm Steve Lias, and I'd like to show you a quick and easy way to assemble all of the pages for the Ghosts of Mesa Verde in a way that will prevent you from having to stack up a long line of music stands to separate you from the audience. Be much more intuitive, simpler, there are only two page turns, and the audience will get to see you while you and the other performer face each other. First, let me show you how to tape the pages together. You can see here I've laid out all of the pages in the order that you'll need. You'll need to print out two complete copies of the piece, or copy them onto 8.5 by 11 pieces of paper, and then arrange them with a 5 and a 6 next to each other, and then another 5 and 6 upside down here, and then a 1 and a 2 that are right side up, and then another 1 and a 2 that are upside down. On the, and that's one set of music, leave that, tape those together and leave it separate from this set. This set will be a three and a four right side up, a three and a four upside down, and then a seven and an eight right side up, and a seven and an eight upside down. Once you've got these taped together in this format, then you can fold them by pulling the middle up and just folding it over onto itself. If you want to, you can tape the top end. If you don't, it's not necessary. And so you'll end up with two, and I've labeled them to be clear. On mine, I've labeled them player one left and player one right. Now let me show you how that works when we assemble it on the stand. So here I've got some finished copies of the left and right sections of that, and in this case, we've gone ahead and put a hard uh, card stock on the front and the back of it to make it work a little better. You notice that I've got two stands here, back to back. There's a set over here and a set here that lines up with it. And then on the other side, I've got another set of two stands. So there are four stands here, and I've labeled player one left, player one right here. I'm gonna simply flip it open, so that I can see the first page here. I'm gonna flip this one open so that I can see pages three and four. So I've got pages one, two, three, and four all ready for the first flute player. Now I'm over on the player two side, and you'll see that once you put these together, it's evident that the second flute player is gonna to need to start on the third page in, which is where their page one is, then go to page two, and they'll be able to come back over here to page three and page four. Now here's the way it works. Flute player two is gonna play, play page one, and two, and then they're gonna flip the page, and notice that they're gonna turn the page for both players. So now they can move on to three and four, and five and six are already here ready for them. So let's go back and see what that would feel like for the first flute player. So I'm the first flute player now, and I play page one, page two, Page three, and while I'm on page three, the other flute player will have flipped this one over. So I'm on page three, and I'm on page four, and I'm all ready to go back over here to page five. It's already set up. And once you get on to page six, you'll notice a little post-it note. That's to flip the pages for the other player. So now the player number one is gonna flip pages three and four over, turning the page for themselves and for the other player, and now they can see seven and eight. So once again, player one from the beginning of the piece will play one, two, three, four, and while they're over here on three and four, the other player will flip the page. So player one has three and four, they're now ready to see five and six. While they're on page six, they're gonna flip the page. That's their only page turn so that they can see seven and eight. And those page turns work equally well for flute player two, let's look at that. So here we are ready for flute player two. They'll start here on page one, 
page two, they'll flip the page, go to page three and page four. While they're on pages five and six, the first flute player will flip this over and they'll be ready to play page seven and eight. Very easy. I want to point out two other quick things about this setup. The first is that it makes it very easy right out here in front to set up one other stand to hold the shaker. The piece requires a shaker and both flute players need to play the shaker. So having this on a stand right in front is very easy, doesn't block anything. And if you want to have an additional stand upstage for alto flute and piccolo, that's very easy as well. The other thing is that the two players get to stand here and face each other as they're playing. They're not traveling around the stage. They face each other and the audience has a very clear unobstructed view of both players. So I hope you can see this is a much more convenient way of setting this up and it works better for the players and for the audience. One more time, let me reiterate exactly how to take the pages together. For flute player left, you're going to have a copy of five and six, and then another copy of five and six upside down, then a copy of one and two, and another copy of one and two upside down. They'll fold together to make one booklet which you can tape across the top or put some cardstock on if you want to. For the other player, For the other player, you're going to have pages three and four, then another copy of three and four upside down, then seven and eight, and a further copy of seven and eight upside down. You can fold that shut and you can put tape across the top if you want to and put some cardstock on it.